بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد In this video I'm going to respond to one of the misunderstandings, misrepresentations of a text that is from Imam al-Sanusi where he mentions that it is from the principles of disbelief in Islam to hold on to only the apparent literal meanings of the Quran and Sunnah and so I'm going to explain why but first let's listen to Abdul Rahman, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Hassan where he uh, talks about this in the Sharh al-Kubra he mentioned It's two in our country as well It's been Aqaid Sab'a they call it He says Usul al-Kufri Sitta The foundation of Kufri Seven Okay Sitta Yeah Six mm. He says the foundation What did I say? You said seven but Seven say. sorry He says Usul al-Kufri Sitta The foundation of this belief is six He mentioned five And then look what he said after that He said Sadisan The sixth one mm. Is what? By holding on to the kitab and the sunnah of initials aqidah من غير بصيرة without having any insight and knowledge of aql هو أصل ضلال الحشوية فقالوا بالتشبيه Okay, so here you can see what the claim was. The claim was that um, he's, he's criticizing Imam Sanusi for mentioning that it is from the principles of disbelief to hold on to only the apparent meanings of the Quran and Sunnah. Now, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Hassan made a mistake in his translation. I believe it was a genuine slip up because, uh, and it wasn't intentional because there's just no way you can miss the most important part of Imam Sanusi's statement, which was when he said, Bimujarradi Zawahir. So Sheikh Abdul Rahman Hassan just said, holding on to the Quran and Sunnah. That's not what he said. You know, holding on to the Quran and Sunnah in its correct understanding will not take you outside the fold of Islam. But he said, Bimujarradi Zawahir al Kitab was Sunnah. Mujarrad means only it's to restrict something, and Zawahir is its apparent or literal meanings. He said, holding on to only the apparent literal meanings of the Quran and Sunnah. That is what can take you outside the fold of Islam. So to explain that, I'm just going to give a few examples of, of different uh, you know, things that we can take on the apparent meaning. And uh, this is as our teachers have taught us, as our teachers have transmitted um, the book um, and, and the meanings and the explanations of the book and how they understand them. So um, I'm going to give three examples from the Quran and three examples from the Hadith, inshallah. The first one from the Quran in Surah Tawbah, Allah says, Nasu Allah fanasiyahum. Now the verb Nasu, uh, this translates as, they forgot Allah, so Allah forgot them. Now the verb Nasu comes from Nisyan, right? Nasiya, Nisyan. The apparent literal meaning of Nisyan is to forget. It's to forget. In a way that you had it in your memory and it slipped your memory, you forgot. This is the apparent literal meaning of the, the word. If you apply that meaning to this verse, you saying, they forgot Allah, and as a reaction to what they did, Allah forgot them. In other words, it slipped Allah's mind that they existed. It slipped Allah's mind, whatever slipped Allah's mind. You're saying Allah forgot. You're applying this forgetfulness to Allah. That takes you outside the fold of Islam. And nobody from the Muslims believe that Allah forgets. Everyone, Nobody understands this verse like that. So it takes you outside the fold of Islam if you hold that belief. Another verse of the Quran, Allah says, Allah calls out to people, He says, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Who's going to give Allah a good loan? In other words, Allah is in need and He wants to take a loan from people. This is what, this is what the apparent literal meaning, meaning is. And I get that from, from uh, one of the disbelievers of the time where he says, is your God, he responds to this verse when it was revealed, he says, is your God in need such that He's asking us for money? If He was not in need, He would never have asked us. This is what he says. So the apparent literal meaning shows that Allah is in need of something. But none of the Muslims believe that. And that's not allowed to be believed um, as a Muslim. You're not allowed to believe that. And it takes you outside the fold of Islam if you believe Allah is in need. Another verse of the Quran, Allah attributes harm to himself. He says, يُؤْذُونَ Allaha. They harm Allah. يُؤْذُونَ is, they have, you have the fa'il, the doer of that verb. Harm inside saying the kuffar, those, the disbelievers, they harm. And then Allah. Allah being the maf'ul, Allah is the one who's being harmed. So the very literal meaning says Allah is being harmed by the disbelievers. If you believe that Allah is being harmed or can be harmed by the disbelievers, you are outside the fold of Islam. We don't believe anything can harm Allah. Okay? Um, Allah, there's, there's a linguistic meaning to this and I'll just explain that really quickly just so that people are not confused. Um, it's that it's the same thing as if I said if there's a bully and the person being bullied and I'm the friend of the person being bullied Okay, now I'm bigger and stronger than the bully So I go to the bully and I say if you mess with him, it's as if you're messing with me, right? You hurt him. You're hurting me So Allah is saying it's if you're hurting 
if you hurt the Prophet ﷺ, it's as if you're launching an attack on Allah. And launching an attack on Allah, you should be afraid, you should be scared because He controls your life. So this is just the meaning, it's the linguistic usage of that. But without that, if you just look at the apparent meaning only, it takes you outside the fold of Islam. There's three from the Quran. You have the hadith. Allah talks about somebody who tries to get closer to him. Allah says, when he, if he comes to me walking, I come to him running. Ataytuhu harwalatan. I come to him running. Now running is movement from one place to another at a very fast speed with legs. You don't say for a bicycle that's going really fast from one place to another that the bicycle is running. You don't say a car is running. You don't say an airplane is running. You only say running when a person uses his legs walking and then walks really fast. That's a run, right? Or a person or an animal or whatever. That's called running. If you took that meaning and applied it to Allah, you are now necessitating that Allah has legs. And not only that, because you say somebody's literally coming to Allah walking and Allah's coming to him running, you're necessitating Allah being in a place. This is the literal apparent meanings of the hadith. If you take that on its literal and apparent, you're outside the fold of Islam. You don't. You, we don't believe Allah is a physical body. Allah has legs. Allah is restricted to a place. Another hadith where Allah says, uh, he calls out to, he says, Yabna Adam istat'amtuka. Istat'amtuka is a verb, is on the verb form istif'al, which is to seek something. Allah is seeking ta'am, Allah is seeking food. Allah says, I, uh, I asked you, O Ibn Adam, O son of Adam, I asked you for food and you didn't feed me. And then later on he says, I asked you for drink, for water, and you didn't quench my thirst. And then he says, Yabna Adam maridtu, I became sick and you didn't attend to me. If you took these on its apparent meaning, now it, it, you can read the whole hadith and, and, and read the explanation of why Allah actually said this and the understanding is there. So Allah is not actually saying that he became sick. But if you took just those words, if somebody comes to you and says, you know there's a hadith Qudsi where Allah says, Ya Adam maritu, O son of Adam, I became sick. What do you say about that? Now if you don't know the whole hadith and you heard that, you would say that's mustahil aqlan, that's impossible. Allah doesn't get sick. We don't believe that about Allah. No Muslim believes that about Allah. It'll take you outside of Islam to believe that Allah gets sick. There's taking it on sick. Another hadith, Allah says, Allah says, Al-Izzu izari wal kibriya'u ridai. Allah attributes a, a cloak and cloth to himself. And he says, my pride and my honor, he's talking about his pride and his honor, are pieces of cloth. And you have people like Ibn Uthaymin, the literalist, who attribute, who, who establish that on its literal apparent meaning. Annahu izar al-haqiqi wa ridai al-haqiqi. ولكن كيف ارتدى به كيف اتزار به هذا علم عند الله. We don't establish a body for Allah. You don't you don't say Allah is going to wear a cloak, but we don't know how He's going to wear it. But then He's not a body. That is you can't do that because the lawazim the what's necessary from your statement of Him wearing something is that He's a physical body such that a cloak a physical object can encompass Him. Nothing encompasses Allah. You can't say something wraps around Allah. This cloak, in other words, Allah is restricted to this size and the cloak is bigger so that it can wrap around him. But we don't know how it's going to wrap around him. That's what it thinks, Ibn Uthaymin says. And so taking, it, taking these things on its literal will lead you outside of the fold of Islam. And he says, he says مِنْ غَيْرِ بَصِيرَةٍ Without having any knowledge of the intellect, any knowledge of the laws of the intellect because the principle of Ahlus Sunnah is to take everything on its lahir and apparent meaning. So we do take as the Salaf have done. So some, you know, we have people mentioning that, oh, the Salaf took everything on its apparent, so we have to do it as well. Yes, that's true, except when the, the apparent meaning is something that is rationally impossible. So when we say we taking this on its apparent meaning, we take everything on its apparent meaning that is to do with matters of the unseen. We take it all on its apparent meaning and we have to. This is the principle of the Ash'aris. You take it on its apparent meaning except if the apparent meaning is mustahil aqlan. If, except if the apparent meaning says 1 plus 1 equals 5. Because if you're going to read in the Quran 1 plus 1 equals 5, you're going to have to understand it a different way. Because Allah can never say 1 plus 1 equals 5. It's a rational impossibility. Likewise, Allah can never say something about himself that is rationally impossible, so we take a different meaning of it. And so this is why he says, if you don't have any knowledge of the intellect, you won't know what's actually mustahil aqlan, what's actually rationally impossible to exist. And you won't be able to decide, you won't have any principles governing what you take on its on the apparent and what you don't take on the apparent. So this is the explanation of that. Um, to once again state that the, the Ash'aris, Ahlus Sunnah, take everything on the apparent just as the Salaf did, whilst negating what is, uh, what is rationally impossible. What is the same as saying 1 plus 1 is equal to 5.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته